Hi, welcome back. Okay, so the next step, what we would like to do is we would like to have a timer, add a timer to our application. So we have a nice application. What I'd like to do is I'd like it to be so that when I click on play, it starts playing, but also it starts a timer. And this timer is going to pull the graph and see basically if playback is complete. And if it's complete, it's going to invoke stop. That's what I'd like to do. Okay. Right. All right, so let's add a timer. So in order to add a timer, we need to go to the internet. I already looked it up here. This is the using timers in the uh, MSDN. So creating a timer. So create a timer by invoking set timer, giving it uh, HWND. Let's take this much copy to our code to our this is the window this is the winproc the window handling function window messages handling function so after st playing starting the graph control v i would like to start a timer so when you start a timer uh you need to give it a timer id we'll just give it 0 and the timeout, it's going to be one second. Ten second, that, right, we, we're going to have a one second. And all we need here is null. Null, you don't need to cast null, I don't think. Because null is, just doesn't need to be cast. Let me remove the spaces here, like this. Okay, F6, stop the run. Let's see if... F8, what's the problem? Intellisense, F6, I don't know what the problem is. Anyway, so we set the timer, no, but what we want, I'm sorry, we want to have an I. no, we don't need the ID of the timer. Now, when you set a timer, what you end up getting is a WM timer with the W param being the ID of the timer itself. We did not use the I, we don't have two timers, we just have one timer. So I'm just gonna have this case of a timer. So, control V, uh, but not here. Not, it's not a menu item. We want it to have, we want it to be a separate, right, case. Regardless of the menu, it has nothing to do with the menu. Right. Okay, so in case of a timer, we're going to poll, we're going to uh, get event. We're going to invoke the get event method once or function. Once every second, we're going to get event. Now, also, w since we start the timer when we play, so when we stop, we need to stop the timer. Um, but also we would like to stop, right? So what we want is get event, but if the event is easy complete, so we want to stop the timer and also stop the graph. So let, mm, let, let's maybe return some value of the get event maybe even let's return the ev code so the ev code i think is a long ev code is it player the get event and the other project the get event ev code right it's a long so we're going to have the value and if it's what we think it is. If it's a stop value, meaning if ev code is ec complete, f12, let's see if it's recognized. I guess it is. Control f6. If it is indeed the case, then we'll stop running the graph and also stop the timer. So in order to stop the timer, 
stopping the timer is through the, I think, the kill timer. Kill timer, you need the ID. The ID in our case is just zero. We just arbitrarily said zero. You can use any number. The fact that they use uh, a macro for the number doesn't mean anything. We said zero. We can also test it that it's zero. But in any case, what we want, no, not here, what, what we want is to invoke kill timer with our window. Our window is HW control space with a big W as you can see here, HW with a big W, capital W, and this is zero. And you can also make sure that this indeed is our timer if you look at the documentation and you make sure that the W param is zero. So you can switch on W param in case it is zero, or just if it's zero, right? If, if it's not zero, then there's nothing for us to do here. If the W param is not zero, then just break. Right? Because we gave it zero when we created the timer, right? And set timer, we said zero. Zero is the ID of our timer. When you create a timer, you, you, you give it an ID so that when you receive the WM timer message you can see I, I, are you talking about my timer this specific timer the zero because you can have bu a bunch of timers in your application anyway so if it's not the zero or our only timer then there's nothing left for us to do here in any other case it's good like this alright so let's create the EC the get event function so copy this let's go directly to the player and add here, and this one will return a long and copy this and go to the player um, file and add here, control V, enter, open, close and this is going to be our get event, so how do you get an event? It's pretty simple, we just we have the code, let's scroll back up, right? We have the code in the other project. So let's go to the other project. And over here, this is the code. This one liner is just the code for getting the event. We have some more code here that's pretty good because you also want to free and you want to return if it's EC complete. So let's take this whole block back to our project, to the user interface project shift a bit to the left okay so HR we need HR that's H result result so H result HR is like this so if succeeded HR so if and if so if it's paused we don't care for it well there's nothing to break out of so we, we don't need all this code just that if EV code is EC complete then we want to return but we need to free so we need to free in any case like this if it succeeded we need to free and the free might fail did we test the free we never tested the free here that's not good so in just for just to be 100% correct, we should always have a throw. Remember when I said we need a we need to always test the HR return. So then I correct myself in the first lecture. And I said almost always. So you see here the, the you don't really test that if it fails you throw an exception. You don't want to stop. You want to continue. All right. So very good. So you need HR, and if it fails you need to throw. Now if everything goes well then if we have a complete then we can return actually we can always just return the event that we get we don't need to test it here right in any case just return it return the EV code 
always. If it succeeded. What about if it failed? Mm, that's a good question. Well, we saw that the EV code is always set to zero by get event. So I guess we can just always just always return it. Just if it succeeded, we're going to be deallocating the parameters. But in any case, always return the EV code. Back to our main or the winproc function. So you get the event. If it's complete, then you stop and kill the timer. Okay, F5. And this should give us a more responsive application. F8, what's the problem? Uh, initialization of EV code is skipped by case. Right. So what I usually do is I open a block for every case. So that if I want to uh, declare variables inside the case, it shouldn't be a problem. F5, still a problem. F8. HWND, capital W, F5, still a problem, F8, EC complete, it's not familiar with EC complete, the D show. Let's go to our uh, player CPP and take this line, control XX, and go to the player H. Whoever uses player H should also include D show, F5. Take a sip of water to the file. So let's test it. One, two, three. All right. So the question is, did it stop? That's a very good question. So uh, let's go to the main, to the win proc. And did it test? I don't even know. Has the timer been invoked all this time? So let's have a breakpoint here and run it again. Restart it. Let's see that we're getting the timer. So play to the file. Okay, so we're getting the timer. It's our timer. Get event gets an event. Is it successful? Yes. Probably the value is 14. So it started. We don't care for this. Return EV code, that's good. So if it's this, stop. Well, it wasn't, so break. Very good. F5, and again we find ourselves invoking get event. This time we can just shift F11, and the value is zero, right? Because basically it failed. So we can have a breakpoint over here. F5, 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 F5. So, so let's test it. Test it. One, two, three. All right. Is it complete? Not yet. F5. Is it complete? Not yet. F5. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. All right. Let's put a breakpoint inside here. F5. Remove this breakpoint. F5. And there we go. So we got there a bit late, as we said, because the resolution of this get event is one second. So the worst case scenario is that we're one second late to close, to shut down the graph a second after it completely, it played out the whole file. So it cleans up properly, F5, and it never gets here again. Phenomenal. Now what happens, by the way, if I go, if I hit stop? Nothing. So play. So, so let's, let's test, test it. One, two, three. It sounded okay. We're out of time. It sounds okay. I don't see the big to the file. So let's test it. One, two, three. Yeah, a one second resolution is actually pretty good. Okay, again, we're out of time. I'll let you play with the parameters, but now we should have an application that is responsive. Let's just make sure before, just before we to the file. switch for today. So let's so test, test it. One, two, three. Under pressure, I'm running the wrong one. F5. So file play. To the file. File play. To the file. Let's file. test it. One, two, three. Let me shut down the One, two, three. Right, we're going to stop here. We're out of time. We'll see you next lecture. Thank you and goodbye.